and then a timeline. A timeline is very important. So here's how I begin to reconstruct it as best as I can. In 1941 is when the secret first start. Remember, the secret has like three parts, we say. So the first two parts start getting better known in the middle of World War II. And it's one of Sister Lucia's diaries. That's when people start finding out. So the first time sort of the world hears about the secret, I mean, they knew there was a secret, but the actual contents, the vision of hell, Russia, those things that we have read yesterday, that's around 1941. And then there's some time that passes. 1960 will be another critical year because that, of course, is when John XXIII will have read the third secret in August of 1959, on August 17th. And he, just before that, on January 25th of 1959, had announced to the world that he was going to have this Second Vatican Council. And then some of his uh, assistants told him, well, you know, you might want to read this thing that Sister Lucia is going to make public in 1960. Have you joined the 100 by 100 challenge? We're on the verge of 100 years of disobedience and the church and world are falling into a crisis. As a result, we're calling all Catholics to help us complete a spiritual bouquet of 100,000 first Saturdays by the 100th anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima's request, December 10th, 2025. Please ask all of your friends, family, and parish to sign up. And don't forget to update your status every month at fatima.org forward slash 100 by 100. Let us do our part in Our Lady of Fatima's message. And so then he reads it in August when he's in Casa Gandolfo, and he says, no, no, this is not for our times, and he wants to shut it down. And so then 1960 rolls around, and in early 1960, in February, an anonymous communication comes from the Vatican, which means we all know it comes from the Pope, he just doesn't want to take ownership of it, that in effect says the third secret will never be revealed. And Sister Lucia also gets silenced. So the Sister Lucia can't reveal the secret herself. So that's a critical year, 1960. Another critical year then is going to be 1989. Uh, I mean, painting in very broad strokes, I would say after that 1960 shutdown on Fatima, there had been a huge momentum in the world building up. Big rosary rallies, big rosary crusades. It was great excitement. Even my mother talks about how she was Catholic school girl with her high school friends. And they were all just excited. 1960 is coming. We're finally going to learn this secret. And then it was so deflating because, oh, no, no, nothing to see here, people. Move along. And, and so there was sort of like this real downturn, and there was a loss of interest in Fatima. And then by the same token, everybody got really excited with the novelties of Vatican II, like the sun being unhinged and emitting all these strange colors. But Our Lady's not going to let her message go away. And so in 1981, it's amazing the way God works, right? I think we all know our history. May 13th, 1981, dates are significant. You know, it's the anniversary that he appears. That's when Aliaka is there in St. Peter's Square and attempts to assassinate John Paul, Pope John Paul II. And he doesn't die. And John Paul then goes on to say he believed it was through the intercession of Our Lady of Fatima that he was saved. He later on even took that bullet and put it in her crown there in Fatima. And so that kind of jarred him. And it was an attempt on the Pope's life that he thought, maybe I should go back and look at this whole Fatima issue. And so then the Pope himself really revives a lot of interest in Fatima, especially the consecration of Russia. And even while he was still in the hospital, he had Russia, he had some ceremony done. And when he got out of the hospital December 8th, he did it again himself. And then in 82, he does it again, and he tries it again, he tries it again in 84. It's like he's obsessed with this. And then 84 seemed to have been his last real effort. After that, he seemed to switch tracks and decided that maybe a better plan for peace with things like the Assisi Pact, where we worship idols of the demons in our churches. It's quite sad that that took place. And churches there in Assisi, the peace plan of Assisi, had to be re-consecrated and rededicated after we had had Buddhas and other idols in, in the very, in, in our, in our, on, our, on our altars, in our sacred spaces. Um, and then a critical year is 1989. Well, you can speculate a little bit here on why 1989 was such a critical year. I believe several things happened. I believe, first, the Cardinal Secretary of State, Sodano, had a lot of power. Many people said that after Vatican II, the way they switched things around, a previous Secretary uh, of the State, they sort of recast the Vatican so that 
the real power was held by the Secretary of State and not by the Pope himself. Uh, but Sodano was certainly a very powerful man and he was putting his pieces into play. He was no friend of Fatima. He was really trying to oppose the message of Fatima. The papal nuncio in Portugal was moved. So in July, a new papal nuncio gets to Portugal. And I believe Sodano used that as his opportunity that now he could have much greater influence in what the Pope would be telling Portugal and what was happening there, which is of course where Sister Lucia is with this new papal nuncio. Maybe he wanted to get in good. Uh, so there's a switch there. And then the other thing that's happening on the global stage, as we all know, if you think about the year 1989, probably everybody will remember, was it October, November, when the Berlin Wall officially fell down? But if you recall that entire summer, all that time leading up to it, there is a lot of turmoil in Hungary and the Czech Republic. Poland's already got the solidarity movement going. So there are these signs that the Iron Curtain is crumbling. Was there a fake Sister Lucia? We know letters were forged in her name, but was she also impersonated by another woman? Now, Father Gruner addressed this years ago, but new evidence has surfaced. So the latest edition of the Fatima Crusader, issue 132, covers what anyone needs to know about this controversial topic. It's a must read. Contact the Fatima Center to request a copy, and please send us your feedback. We're interested. Our Lady of Fatima, ora pro nobis. Now there's, that, there's a whole other thing on whether or not that was a, a, a duplicitous move to advance communism across the world, but at that time maybe people hadn't realized that. And so I think, in my view, Sodano took this as the moment to say, okay, we can now go back to that 1984 event, say that 84 event was it, it was the consecration, we'll use as our evidence the fact that the Iron Curtain seems to be crumbling, and so we'll say, look, see, and I've got a new nuncio who can carry out my plan there in Portugal. And so Sodano issues from the Vatican, again, these anonymous uh, reports, goes out everywhere in the world and basically says, everybody's got to hold on to the new narrative the new narrative, that the 1984 consecration was the real thing. Don't talk about the consecration anymore. Don't ask about the consecration. It's been done. John Paul II did all he could. And over and done with, let's forget about Fatima. Look, here's the Berlin Wall falling down, blah, blah, blah. We've got it done. And so the narrative got switched. But prior to 1989, no one was saying, really, that the 1984 consecration had been done. In fact, John Paul knew himself. And after the consecration, he admits that's not it. And throughout the 1980s, when Sister Lucia was able to speak to someone, and we'll have those testimonies, I may not get into them right now, but they'll be in the Crusader. Sister Lucia was talking to various different bishops and prelates and kept insisting, no, rush, that's not the consecration. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Until in 1989 when that gets flipped. But again, what are you going to do if you're Sodano when you're putting out a false narrative and you want everyone to accept that the consecration's done? And yet you have Sister Lucia saying, no, it isn't done. Well, you have to change it. Sister Lucia has to say, well, I made a mistake. Actually, yeah, it was done. Yes, it's fine. And then we, we'll, we'll get some letters that she's saying that. Maybe we get some interviews. And so after 1989, you begin to see a definite effort to falsify Sister Lucia. And in fact, a lot of evidence, I think, comes from there. We... Again, could go into it, uh, but there's already been proven that there were five forged letters. Uh, there was false interviews. So this is where the dissimulation, this is where a lot of the error and you know, the, the devil sort of murking up the waters and confusing things and sowing his division comes about. But if you really look at the testimony of Sister Lucia, it was consistent throughout. So I'll get to that, a little bit of it. I think it is important to hear some of her own words. So that's the timeline. I think that's the narrative. And I think once you get that picture, it does make sense how there could have been an imposter sister Lucia. 